late from our glamping trip and I had to show you guys this because it's pretty darn funny. These are the clothes that I had packed that I did not wear. Okay. Ridiculous. Okay, there's one, two, three long sleeve t-shirts, one sleeveless, two short sleeves, some uh, yoga pants, extra undies, because I always have to have about 20 pair. I just like that. Um, this little dress sort of cover up, a pair of shorts that I bought brand new, camping shorts, never wore them. Flannel PJs and my um, onesie, you know, it's all sweat material to sleep in as my big knitted vintage sweater and my fur hat. I gotta show you guys, this is my vintage sweater. This is the first sweater I ever, my bed's not made. First sweater I ever made for myself. And it, it is like, we all love it. And it was taken after that. Remember Diana, Princess Diana had that sweater? And it was a whole bunch of, I think it was white sheep like that. And then in the middle there was one black sheep. Well, the pattern was kind of taken from that. Anyway, but this was the first sweater. It's all wool. I absolutely love it. And now it's all vintage. So I always take this to keep myself warm or if I'm sick in the, and have a cold, I wear this. It's just, you know, your like comfort food. This is my comfort sweater. But I digress. I did not need all of these clothes because you tend to just wear one or two things. It's quite hilarious. Although we showered and everything, I think I changed my clothes a couple of times, but it's just, you're in, even though you're glamping, there's a campfire and you're outside. So if you wear the same uh, shorts the next day and we lived in our bathing suits because we were at the lake. So, yeah, kind of funny. Packed a little heavy, don't you think? Anyway, I've just been chilling and relaxing, and I made a movie. Like I mentioned, I just finished editing it. It is hilarious. Richard was just tickled. It's so cute with the boys when they were there. So, yeah, I just had to share this with you. But we have laundry upon laundry upon laundry, as you can imagine, even though I didn't bring, wear a lot of stuff. There's still laundry, blankets, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, raining all day, yesterday, all day, today, today is Sunday. Um, yeah, so I'm really glad we came home and chose to come home for my glamping trip because this would not have been enjoyable, but everything looks so vibrant and green and gorgeous. The rain just, and it smells so fresh. That is the one thing I absolutely loved about glamping was, um, sleeping outside and the freshness of the air. I want to show you guys something though. Um, we were glamping probably, uh, I want to say, I don't know how many miles from here, 60, 80. And then a little bit further up that road is Jasper, the national park. So we were in bear country, but I want to show you something for people that don't live in bear country. They just showed a feature of the bears and why we chose not to go closer into the mountains, especially in the tent. I'll show you. Raining all day, yesterday, all day, today, today is Sunday. Um, yeah, so I'm really glad we came home and chose to come home for my glamping trip because this would not have been enjoyable, but everything looks so vibrant and green and gorgeous. The rain just, and it smells so fresh. That is the one thing I absolutely loved about glamping was um, sleeping outside and the freshness of the air. I want to show you guys something though. Um, we were glamping probably, uh, I want to say, I don't know how many miles from here. 60, 80. And then a little bit further up that road is Jasper, the national park. So we were in bear country, but I want to show you something for people that don't live in bear country. They just showed a feature 
of the bears and why we chose not to go closer into the mountains, especially in the tent, I'll show you. So these bears were just seen just, um, just before Jasper and there's a crew that goes out there, wildlife protectors, to protect the bears because people still think they're like teddy bears. I mean, if I was in Africa, I would never think a lion is like, oh, cute and cuddly, nor would I think a black bear is. But anyway, just look at this. Blueberries, all right. Uh, there's definitely more uh, wildlife jams that we attend. Look at the highway. He's traveling in that direction, so we just ask people not to stop like that. Do you, if you want to see it, feel free to pull over, take a quick photo and keep moving, but remain in your car, please. Okay, thanks. People will stop and quite often Look they forget the that they're on the main highway, they need to pull over. Okay. Uh, so There's they will stop in the middle of the road, leave all doors open and run toward that the right there. Um, is a so it's a highway, it might be maybe like 90 kilometers per hour, so were. it's very they're dangerous. Crazy. It's right there actually, you can yeah. see the branches moving. Yeah. After a few photos, if you can keep moving, that will be awesome. Thanks. And please stay in your vehicle. Yeah. We did not we want to have to, to deal with this. At all time. Uh, Especially if you brought any food into, the forest, into your tent, um, you know, they have a really strong nose and they would be wrestling around and tearing through your tent. Look at that thing. So that's bears in our part of the world. And there's been so many bears um, for some reason this year, just an extraordinary amount. Look at him of bears. You notice they all have collars on because they've all been tagged and usually bears that are tagged that's where how they keep track of them and sometimes they will come into a campground and they will get tagged and if they find them there if they're a nuisance bear they'll have to put them down but these people are trying to protect that from happening but that's a grizzly bear. We're still doing laundry and putting things away. But the beauty of some of the things like these, we didn't use all these older face cloth. But usually, normally I would have washed them because they smell smoky, which they don't. I don't know why they don't. They don't. But it smells so smoky here anyway. Why bother? It's really smoky still. That uh, fire in BC, I wish the... I wish the wind would shift. And today, I'm actually gonna put some makeup on. That's a lupus little thing. It's been there, oh, for months, and that one. Those were lupus flare-ups and they left a mark. I'm going to get a mani and a desperately needed pedicure and I'm actually gonna put makeup on. So, yeah. I only put this headband on because it was I was unpacking, I didn't know where to put it, so I put it on my head. So I have to fold a few more sheets and duvets and stuff like that, and towels, and then we should almost be back to normal-ish. We're never back to normal. And if we have time, we're going out today to purchase, I'll show you my bedroom, and it kind of hangs down. The logic of us putting it there when most of them in our, in our family are over six feet is berserko. Every single one has conked their head or their babies when they're holding their babies. So we're saying, we've got to move that. We've got to change that. So we have to change a plug-in behind the bed. And so when the power is off tomorrow, we're going to get two. That's an electrical outlet. I don't know. What were we thinking? So we're going to take that down. I think what it was is we had this light and we didn't want to throw it out because it was really nice. It's really pretty. And we didn't want to throw it out. So, or give it away. So we made it work with this chain. Excuse me, but dorks. So we're going to get a couple of lights with ceiling fans on them because this room is so big. It'll look really nice, I think. Richard thinks ceiling fans are old fashioned. But... I like the charm of that, you know? So, yeah. So we got everything done. I got makeup on. Do I look pretty, Richard? You look beautiful. You didn't even look at me, you looked the other way. Oh, it was, beautiful. Me. Flowers. Look, Richard's got a beard, sort of. He's not shaving till, when are you shaving? Tomorrow? Tonight. Tonight, because he has to go to work. 
It looks really handsome and debonair. It sits in at the center, right? You know? Great? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm off to get my nails did. Then I'll feel back to normal. Sure will. So, wow, look at the ceiling fans. Well, that's a pretty light right there. Who has somebody has that light? Which one? Oh? No, the one with the metal around it. That one there? Yeah. No. The other no, one. No. Right. The one lit right. The silver right here. That's what I said. That one yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> it looks like Laura or Laura. Actually, Jesse has that one. A long, narrow one. Jesse? Yeah, remember? Somebody yeah. has it. Yeah, yeah, it looks so familiar, but it's pretty. Okay. Hi. Yeah, let me show you guys my Manny. Oops. Got some tea on my finger. Manny and Petty. Isn't that pretty? Such a beautiful color. It's gray, but it has a little hint of blue in it. So we just ordered some Chinese food. We thought we'd do something different because we never have Chinese food. Hey, Richard. Never. Never. So we thought we'd have something different today for supper. It's that kind of day. So I'm just making some nettle Greek tea for us. Nettle Greek is so good, and it's so good for you. It's got an agent, natural obviously, in the herbs. That is really good for aching muscles and joints and just your whole sense of yuckiness. Not that I feel yucky, but it's just a good tea. So that's what we're having with our Chinese. Because I can't find our... What kind of tea did you say? Is it oolong? Ginseng. No, gin, it's not ginseng. It's oolong. Some Chinese tea we used to drink. We can't think of the name of it. <laughs> so I thought I'd come outside and pick some flowers. I'm so proud of Richard and his um, uh, tomato that he grew from seeds. Awesome. Because it's hard in this climate to grow anything, even from a bed in the But he started those inside and he did so well. And they're actually making tomatoes. I haven't looked out at our garden since. Holy moly macaroni. I forget what's even in here. I think it's a zucchini or squash. There's lots of flowers. Hmm. These look like tomatoes. Or whatever it is, there will be stuff. So I just thought I'd come out here and pick a nice bouquet of flowers for inside. Pick some of these. I was in the middle of picking flowers and the phone rang, but I want to show you guys this so far. But I went to pick these yellow daisy things, and oh my god, I'm still covered in these little bugs. They're so disgusting. Look, this what's inside of them is like blood. Like it's gross. But wait till you see how many are in here. Oh, let me see if I can. Okay. Can you see on the stems, every one of those is a bug. Oh, look at them. They are disgusting. Okay, so I'm not picking those. I don't want those in my house. I was in the middle of picking flowers and the phone rang, but I want to show you guys this so far. But I went to pick these yellow daisy things and oh, Oh my God, I'm still covered in these little bugs. They're so disgusting. Look, this what's inside of them is like blood. Like it's gross. But wait till you see how many are in here. Oh, let me see if I can, okay. Can you see on the stems, every one of those is a bug. Oh, look at them. They are disgusting. Okay? So I'm not picking those. I don't want those in my house. This is grossness to the max. I don't know what kind of little bugs these are. They're red. When you squish them, they have like blood inside. See? 
I want to be pleased to take them in my house, but it's just so <laughs> disgusting. It's making my flesh crawl. They're all over. So I Googled it, and I think there's some kind of aphid, apparently. And they said if you have some insecticidal soap, which doesn't hurt the plant, then you will. That will get rid of them. Let's give it a one, two, three. Let's see if it'll work. They're so creepy and gross. I just don't like them. Here's a whole swatch right here. Let's try it. They give me the heebie-jeebies to make my flesh crawl. There. Be gone. So I just finished making some banana muffins. Just gonna... Well, they're not muffins yet. They're muffins to be. I um, had some ripe bananas in the pan from... I mean, in the fridge from when we went glamping. I just threw them in the refrigerator section. And then I thought, I better do something with these. Cause you know how you say you're going to, and then you end up chucking them into the compost or something. Cause you don't, but these were perfect for muffins. So I thought, why not? Can't dance, as Richard always says. He goes, why not? Can't dance. <laughs> don't know where he got that from. Is anybody reading the book, uh, The Woman in Cabin 10? I'm reading it now. I'm just kind of still, I'm only on chapter 12, I think, 11 or 12. And I, I, it's starting to get kind of interesting and good, but I'm just not sure. They introduce so many characters. It takes place on a, a yacht. Or, a, yeah, like a yacht trip, and they introduce so many characters, and I'm like, I don't know who these people are. I'll never remember all these characters, but maybe you don't have to, you know? But yes, I just wondered, why so many characters? Or is it going to be like the game of Clue? Who done it, you know? I don't know. So I just got two more. God, I love these silicone little muffin uh, liners. They're so great. Every one you just pop them out, they pop out. Don't have to grease a pan so that's less oil. No things not coming out of the pan. They come out perfectly. Love them. Oh, and another thing I totally love. You know my little Google Home Mini? Well, you just ask her, do you know any banana muffin recipes? She goes, yes. Would you like me to list the ingredients? And you go, sure. And she goes, okay. Let me know when you need the next one. So you just go, okay, next, okay, next, okay, next. And then she tells you the steps. And there's no cookbook, nothing. She just lists the whole thing to you. It's really that is the best 40 bucks ever spent. If you guys can ever catch those on sale, oh, it's like having a little robot in your kitchen or in your finance oh. or anything. If you say, hey, I don't want to say it too loud because when she hears her name, she will answer. But you ask her, start in the movie, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that was, how old is so-and-so? He is, how long is this? How much does this weigh? It just never ending. It's like having a super smart friend. And then I always say thank you. She goes, it's my pleasure. I'm just making these a little bigger. I think I got them all. Let's see. Yes. So let me pop these in the oven. So remember that dorky light that was in here that was hanging over this chair here? Everybody kept hitting their heads. Well, voila, ceiling fans and holy. I did not know ceiling fans cooled you off. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, they're fans, but I, I can feel the coolness down here. This is awesomeness. I love it. So like you're just in all these different settings. Of course, I have them on the highest just because I wanted to see. But isn't that the coolest? 
love it. When cooking, once again, yes, I sure am. I cook a lot. My girlfriend is coming to visit. She lives in, she used to live in Edmonton, and now she lives in Calgary. So her and her sister are going to pop by tomorrow for a little visit. And I, they're both can't eat gluten. It's not a matter of like trying to be the new diet trend. They just cannot eat gluten. So I wanted to make a dessert for them. And I was going to make one of those really cool hummingbird cakes, but it's just full of flour. I mean, it's got pineapple, bananas, you know, it's a cake with flour and pineapple, banana, what else is in there? And it's got a cream cheese ice. It just sounded so delicious. But then I'm like, well, I can't make that. So then I thought, hey, why not a good old pavlova? It's a very, very common dessert in Australia. I used to make them a lot. And what you do is just egg whites. This is four egg whites beaten with, I think it was one and a quarter cups of sugar, but one cup would be fine. I think I just used one teaspoon of lemon juice, a teaspoon of vanilla, and two teaspoons of cornstarch. And so you whip those up until, you know, stiff peaks like that. And then you spread it out on a nine inch circle. So I just so happen to have the Silpat mat because you're supposed to put it on um, parchment paper, but these are just as good because they do not stick. And it's got measurements all around. So I'm just kind of going between the eight inch and the, nine, and the 10 inch and raising the edges a little bit. And then it will, when it's cooked, cook for an hour and then you let it dry in the oven and you can leave it in the oven overnight you want it really dried out like it's a big huge crunchy meringue and then you place whipped cream on top and then some fruit and man is it good so I have some raspberries and blueberries and that's what we'll have tomorrow does that sound delicious so here's how the pavlova looks before it goes in the oven. So I'm just about to put it in for an hour. Yeah. Getting all these calls this morning. I will go outside, look at the sky to yellow. Look at this. This is from the forest fires. And look at the haze. I can't even take a breath in. It's that strong. But we have a yellow sun within a yellow sky. Ugh. And it stinks. It smells like campfire when you throw the water on it and you know it's not while it's burning but when the water's thrown on it sorry I'm wiggling yeah not nice so this is the next day and this is what the pavlova looks like see hard as can be it's meringue and so then you fill it up with I've got some raspberries here thawing and some blueberries here and then I'm just going to whip some cream I just hope they're thawed and I'm not sure what time my friend is coming by for tea but for sure by the time they get here these will be thawed it is so smoky I have got my diffuser going here oh I should go to the one in the bedroom too got all the doors closed I had to use an inhaler. Hi, here I am. Hello. I had to use an inhaler because I uh, couldn't take the smoke. But look, everything's so yellowy, hazy. When I woke up this morning, there was this yellow haze. I'm burning candles. I thought that might help. All windows closed. These fans are great. Love them. So here we go. I put some. Mmm, cinnamon oil in there. And there. Mm. So all the lights are on. I don't know what else I can do. Not much. But people cannot live in this for a long period of time. This is ridiculous. Our sky is brown. There's no blue. And this actually should be a blue sky day. That is... 
the temperature is probably about 78. But the sky shouldn't be that color, it should be blue. Cray cray. Oh well, Mother Nature at her best. It turned out. It's kind of drooping a bit, but I'll show you a really good picture of it. So I put a layer of whipped cream, then blueberries, then whipped cream, then blueberries, and then the raspberries on top. And then I put some little doilies, because I didn't have a plate round enough for it, but I had Richard had made these when we did our floor. See? He saved a floor towel and put little feet on it so I can use it as a serving platter. And I just put little doilies underneath. So I hope it tastes good. I'll let you know. So I'm going to close this log on another smoky day. I just got out of the shower. And with the sad news that Aretha Franklin passed away this morning. And that's so sad. She brought so many gifts to us. And the blessing is we can still have Aretha's music for evermore. So rest in paradise, Aretha. And this week we lost three people. Uh, Richard's first cousin, she lives far away from here, passed away. A friend of mine, dear friend of mine, passed away. And another high school friend of mine passed away yesterday, like boom, boom, boom. And then today, Aretha. And then I found out one of my dearest friends is really sick. So, you know, you got to live your life no matter what. Like I had terrible pain last night face pain and it was probably as a result of um, talking a lot yesterday like three hours of just yap 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 <laughs> I'm thinking that was it or it could have been nothing it's trigeminal neuralgia just attacks when it feels like it and I want to um, make some lasagna and some cookies because Jesse and his dear wife dear Jesse and his dear wife uh, some friends of theirs, their apartment burnt down and a condo in a condo fire a few weeks ago. And they found out that they had been staying in a motel and it's a single mom and four kids. And Jesse said, no, that's no, you guys are gonna come live with us until you get your place. So they're living with them for a couple of weeks. And I'm like, you already have a family of five and now you have another family of five. And he opened his heart and his home just like nothing. He barely mentioned it. He's one person that never says much about anything. Like he didn't say, oh, I won the city karaoke and I'm going to the prevent. You know, he just doesn't say anything. And I'm like, what a kind thing to do. What a, a, a completely act of kindness. So... The very least I can do, I mean, there's nine kids in that house and, wait a minute, no, three, four, seven kids in that house and three adults, seven kids. I can bake them cookies and I can make lasagna. I can do that. And the mom lost, she's a teacher, first grade, and all of her readers for her first grade class were burnt. So I've been talking to some teacher friends of mine, so we're all collecting some books for her. And yeah, you do what you can do. Like I could have lied in bed today and just, really I could have easily stayed in bed today and just suffered through the pain. But you know what? I, I can also get up, I have two legs, and I can get up and make something for someone else. Like, you can, and I will. So, anyway, on that note, I want to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, and this vlog is going up super late. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye!